Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio. Um, today I want to show you how I go about stabilizing a quilt. Now I have talked about this quite a bit in my videos, but I've never really gone into a lot of detail and showed you step by step how I do that. What I have on the machine right now is a flying geese quilt and I want to show you how I'm going to stabilize that before I do the detail quilting. Okay, the first thing I do to stabilize my tops is I load them with the uh, quilt top attached to my quilt top leader. I don't do a full float, I do a partial float. So the bottom edge of the quilt is attached to the leader. And then what I'll do to the top of the quilt is I will baste it across the top. And I'll show you that when I get to, this, to that point. Um, what I find this does for me is it helps me prevent getting a lot of fullness at the bottom of the quilt. It helps prevent getting a lot of waviness in the borders and it just solves a lot of my headaches. I have the backing fabric attached now and I'm going to roll that up and uh, then I'm going to lay down the batting. Now this backing fabric is secured on both ends at the take up uh, as a take-up roller as well as the backing fabric roller. And now I'm gonna put on that batting layer and we'll take it from there. Here, I'm just gonna let it lay loose for right now and I'm going to put a basting stitch all the way across the um, quilt top, the quilt sandwich here. I just have the backing and the batting. So I'm gonna do a basting stitch across and then I'll line my quilt top up with that. Now th this is going to secure the uh, batting to the backing fabric and it's going to give me a straight line that I can line up my edge of my quilt top to. So I'm gonna go, oops, I'm gonna go down to about 15 stitches, about 15% of the motor speed. I've got, I'm on manual mode right now. I'm going to turn on my horizontal channel lock. And I'm just going to baste across. And I'm putting some pressure on this side of the quilt so that it doesn't bunch up on me. my threads and then move the machine out of the way. So now I'm going to get my pins and I'm going to pin this top along this stitching line here, this basting line. And I'm just pinning down about, oh, it's a little over an inch, maybe an inch and a half away from the top edge. And they're about four inches apart and that's I'm not measuring that I'm just kind of eyeballing whatever looks good okay now I'm going to base about a quarter inch in and you can make that basting stitch closer to the edge if you want you know some quilters that baste it very close to the edge about a sixteenth of an inch that makes me a little bit nervous though. I like a little bit more leeway there. And it's also a good guide for me to show me where to end my quilting. If I go into that basting line, um, I know it's going to get cut off by the binding. So that's kind of my mark right there to tell me to stop my design before I get to that point. Okay, I'm going to leave the machine right there. I'm going to smooth out the top and then I'm going to tighten everything and then I'm going to base down the edges. Just watch your fingers when you're doing this. I let the hopping foot get pretty close to my fingers but I'm being careful. I'm going to 
gonna do the other side. As far as I'm going to go at this point, and then I'm going to start stabilizing the top as I go. Okay, um, there are all different kinds of tools that you can use. Um, you can just use a regular straight ruler like this for stitching in the ditch. Um, what I'm going to use today though is this one. This is um, a multi tool. It's the Handy Quilters mini scallop ruler so it's got a little scallop edge here at the top and um, then it has a straight edge here it has lots of quarter inch lines in here to help you line up things and um, this little cutout here is a half inch deep and then it has the quarter inch mark on each end so th this is specifically made for stitch in the ditch to kind of help you line things up so I'm going to get to the stitching in the ditch here and I'm going to go on uh, stitch regulated mode and I'm at 12 stitches per inch and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch in the ditch around this border there's only one border in this quilt now a cream thread would have matched the background of this quilt but I really wanted this thread to show in this particular quilt, so I decided to just go ahead and use this taupe. Taupe looks really good with these darker greens. And this is YLI thread, and the color is Driftwood. It's YLI long arm professional thread. So if you want to, to look for that thread, that's the color I'm using. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to go ahead and secure those stitches, however you like to do that. And I'm going to pick up some loose threads here. And now I'm going to stitch around the blocks. Now for this quilt, I had to look at this really close to figure out where the blocks were because some of them have the same fabric sashing them in it and that's kind of what this is there's a block right here so this these two strips go with this block but this strip goes with this one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stitch all the way across in this row and then I'm just going to stitch all the way down this way in in this section that I can reach so I'm, I'm going to stop at the end of this block here which I might need to advance the quilt just a little bit but that's how I'm going to do this. I'm not going to go ahead and stitch in here at this point. Um, I'm not wanting to do the detail quilting. This doesn't have to be close together. It just I just need to outline the blocks. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to go horizontal first. And I like to go horizontal first because um, in my experience, even though it, you, you don't notice it, you tend to push fabric towards the way you're pushing the machine. So if I'm going left to right, the fabric is kind of moving slowly left to right. And especially on your backing fabric, sometimes you will get a little pucker in there or a pleat or a fold because you're moving that direction. It's not so bad if you don't have anything in the way, but if you've already stitched down vertically and then you come up here, you're pushing that and then you're going to get a little crease or a little pucker right there where those two seams are crossing. So that's why I like to go horizontal first.
Now I'm going to go vertically. <clears throat> or, let me see. I'm going to roll this quilt up just a little bit because I am so close to being able to get another row in. So let me do that. Now I can go horizontal here on this row. Now I'm going to go vertically. And you could do all of your horizontal lines first and then come back and do your verticals if you like. But just, I do that sometimes, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to do this one section for you. So we're going to get both directions going. Repeat all the way across the quilt. grab the camera and show you a few things up close. Okay, here um, is what I've done so far. And I've used this taupe thread, which here's this, some threads that you can see. It goes pretty well with the darker colors in the background fabric. And then when you put it over the green, it's going to blend in actually pretty well. So just from experience in the past, I know that the taupey colors go good with these kinds of greens. Now there are three flying geese in each block. You can see here. And this one was machine pieced. This is not a vintage top. It's, there are some older fabrics in there. Um, this one is from the 1990s. That's one of my own fabrics. This one here, um, I did have this in my stash at one point. And that is either 1990s to somewhere in the 2000s. And this one actually is from the 1980s. I also had this one before. I actually made a dress out of this um, back in the 1980s before I had children. So that's how I remember this. And um, these other fabrics, I don't know how old they are, but I don't think any of them are really vintage they're just maybe some older fabrics kind of like like these probably from the 1980s and on and um, so it's it's not a vintage top it's probably 30 years old at the oldest so so what we have here you can see the basting stitches that I used all the way around the border and then I went and did the 12 stitches per inch in the seam here in the ditch around the border and then I went around each block so and to do that I just went horizontally across and then I came vertically down right there and just crossed there and just came on down and I just went as far as I could on this 
row um, and now I'm going to advance the quilt and just repeat it again and I'll just keep doing that until I get through this whole quilt now this quilt isn't that large it is 40 inches wide by 52 and a half inches long so it's not a large quilt so this one should go pretty fast what is going to be um, more time consuming of course is the detail quilting and that's where I will find out if I need to stitch in the ditch around these little sashings here which I probably will but right now that's not my goal my goal is just to stabilize the quilt so um, I kind of want things to be pretty consistent pretty even as far as the stabilizing goes so I'm not interested in doing any extra ditching within the block I just want to ditch around the block so when I get to do into doing the detail quilting then I'll decide what I need to do here in these sashes which more than likely I will ditch that but um, there's always a chance I may change my mind I've got the quilt all stabilized now and now I've got the um, bottom edge basted down and I removed the red snappers these pieces I removed these removed these <laughs> I removed these from the top leader and so everything is all basted down and now I can treat this as one piece so I can roll back and forth as much as I want to without disrupting any of the stitching that I've already done so what I'll do from this point is I'll go back to the top of the quilt and then I'll start working on my um, detail quilting and usually what I do is I do my borders first and then I work on the blocks so this was um, kind of a demonstration on how I stabilize a quilt so basically what it's doing is it is um, basting the quilt all around the outside edges and then stitching in the ditch around each block and between each border and basically that's all stabilizing is so um, it just helps me um, from getting a lot of wrinkles and getting the quilt out of um, square it keeps everything in square and um, it just makes my life easier. Um, I never had very good luck with floating my tops and I know a lot of people that's all they do and they have you know an excellent experience with it but I don't and I don't know if it's the tension on my machine I don't know if it's the fact that I normally quilt fairly dense um, I don't know I don't know what the reason is but it does take an extra step you do have to attach those your quilt top to your quilt top leader but when you use in a um, loading system like the red snappers it doesn't take long and I think the you know the five extra minutes that it takes me to do that is well worth the time because then I don't have the hassles with uh, fullness at the bottom of my quilt so this is how I do it and um, I hope you learned something from it I thought I hope there was something helpful in the video for you and I hope to see you in the next video thanks for watching for more quilting ideas click on the video links and to keep up with my newest projects click on the subscribe button I hope to see you again soon